Olaf, what's up, man? Not too much. Um, yeah. uh, had a pretty chill day after a pretty rough couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Rough couple but of rough weeks. I mean, record rough in just a good dropped. way. I had a, yeah, exactly, and I had a lot of things, uh, a lot of things happening, which is which is cool, but also very busy. Yeah. Oh, totally. I I I don't blame you. Um. Well, I love the new record, Nostalgia, kicks Thanks, ass, dude. awesome. Um. So, what was the recording process like for that record? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know where to start, really, but uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um. I think I mean we basically I hate to talk about talk about it but it's it started during the pandemics obviously but we can cut that out but it's <laughs> uh you know um but but it did it, it it was like we started in 2020 I started to like compile demo songs for this that, that later got to be this album uh like like uh plotting things out and see how you know writing riffs and and starting to to get ideas i think it was mostly because you know things were really slow at that time so i could like really sit down and really focus on both what i wanted to do because i think this 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 album has a very strong idea behind it but it also like it also gave me so much time to really focus on the crafting of the songs that's awesome yeah uh you can definitely tell how much effort and and passion you did put into some of the crafting and and the structure. That's now, right. I do want to yeah. talk about the uh, the solos because I love your soloing. Uh, so, what oh, thanks, what is man. your creative process with like composing a solo? How important is it to like nail that solo? Well, I don't know, but I think it's like how I see it and what I what, what I mean. Since I compose all, like usually I compose like not only the the actual guitar solo, but the entire harmonization the background chords everything like that that's that that's totally uncentered and and i think that's that's where you got to start with the solos you know to be able to build melodies you also have to like like make a backing track that really works with the melodies and stuff like that so i kind of work with those two in like like uh it's not that i'm just playing solo over a riff i compose it so much together you know i've realized like every key change is like the de deliberately thought through every every chord in every part of the solos are like it's 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 a reason to why it's there and it's composed for the entirety of the solo not 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 only the like the, the lead guitar part wow yeah that's awesome man that's really cool to hear yeah um now, something that really like blew me away about nostalgia was the production, because I'm so sick of like modern metal production. It's just yeah, so yeah. all the same. Uh, where with this new record, you had like that that like new modern production, but with that rawness in it, and it's just such yeah. a perfect blend. Are you really hands on with production? How important is production to you? Oh, everything. I mean. Um, I, I think because when I compose music and when I think about music, I compose it in my head and, uh, you know, it can be so detailed sometimes how I hear it in my head is like, uh, so, so down to the type of reverb on the snare, for example, you know, so, uh, that's, uh, that's that I think that goes hand in hand with composing also because composing is eventually, I guess, to get, what you hear inside your head out uh, like out on the record um so that's also a part of it i think and that's why we also do that ourselves that's awesome yeah because it's like i feel like a lot of modern records it's just like a wall of sound pretty much yeah you can't really oh, man, hear the individual I can't, instruments can't stand, it. can't stand like I, I mean if you if you, even if it's the songs are good it's impossible to hear if this if the songs are good if you have no character because eventually music, I think, and, and identifying with music is, is so much about like hearing a character of a sound, just like when you heard like uh, like Ride Lightning or Number of the Beast or any of those like classic albums. I mean, I can hear like 50 milliseconds of any of those albums and I instantly know that that's an album because it has the character. But nowadays, when everybody's using the same drum samples and they quantize the drums and they they like 
use like scooped 5150s with the guitar. I mean, everything sounds the same. Everything. And they auto-tune, for example, the vocals beyond recognition. There's no character whatsoever left in music. So I, I can't listen to it. I mean, it doesn't matter if the latest Exodus record is a great record. Mm -hmm. I... I, I can't stand it. I no, I, it's, I I would like to listen to it, but I can't listen to it because of the production. I mean, and 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 that was just one example out of a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I think you said in the past that like I, I believe like Kill 'Em All or the Black album was like one of your first albums you ever bought. Now, yeah, you must have yeah. hated Death Magnetic when that came out with the <laughs> clipping and how much of a mess that was. You know, maybe. Yeah, I, but I didn't expect anything else. Um, so I had no expectations. <laughs> but uh, but at the same time, I, 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 I don't blame, like everybody wants to blame the mastering for what's been happening. But for me, I don't see it. it it's not the mastering that's the problem. You can make a loud master. You can You can take any... You can take like high and dry and you can make a loud master of it and it would still sound like high and dry. So it's not, that's not the problem because you have, but all the details and all the character you have already in the production phase, like in the, in the choice of what snare you're using, what, what drums you're using, what, what guitar tones you're using and, and all that. So you, I think you can, you can make a loud record, but it can also still have, have character. So it doesn't really matter. Like, it's not so much up to that really. It's, it's more of a production choice, but that was also awful, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> or actually, or, or, or let me, let me rephrase myself. You could, I, 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 Death Magnetic and, and the latest Metallica album, they had a lot of, they still had a lot of very significant typical Metallica like signatures on them you know you had the guitar tone you you i mean the james hetfield guitar tone has been pretty much the same since since yeah since master of puppets i would say and yeah, then uh, yeah. but but it really i mean but but at, and at least since since black album and i mean the latest album sounds just like that i mean it's the same character of, of of sound i i really love the guitar tone on load and reload actually it's really thick yeah but and you can really hear that so you got the character plus you get like lars super significant kick which is tuned like with this with a very specific like like click to it in in the in the high register and also you have like the the, the super snappy but low bottom to it and and hmm. you know those are small things that you instantly recognize metallica's sound on uh, and they, they were still present which is cool um but uh so so i i, I wouldn't say that they are the worst examples of modern <laughs> production no still yeah interesting cool to hear um yeah. so yeah so we were talking about some older records and i feel like nostalgia has kind of been a theme here um, so what does nostalgia specifically mean to you? Oh, that means a lot of things. First of all, it means the the the, the emotion of uh, looking back at something and you, you and, and feeling a little bit blue about it. But uh, I, I kind of in this in this concept, I've taken it a little bit further, uh, I guess. Uh, and and like in this case, with, with a song title, I I, I refer to a little bit more existential side of, of it where you like question, you, you, you see everything around you change, wither, die all the time. And you, you look at yourself, you, you look older all the time. And I mean, the, the ravages of time consumes everything, you know, sooner or later. And that's kind of the, 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 the concept that I, where, that I took this to somehow that, that that's you can awesome. also see like in the, in the album cover and, uh, and uh, and if you read the lyrics for nostalgia a little bit more carefully, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. And and the album cover like exactly represents that, right? With the the hourglass yeah, yeah. and the that's awesome. Yeah. One of the best, probably actually like the best cover art you guys have ever had. Just such a beautiful cover. Yeah, and it's I'm so nice. Super happy with it too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's so nice for a band to have like a painted album cover again. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's such, been, it's all I've been CGI. waiting to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But, but also, cool. I mean, we yeah, our previous album was also painted, but we never really. The problem we had there was that we really didn't really have any good idea, <laughs> but the, the execution was good. But this is this is more of a conceptual idea where both me and the artist agreed on a on a on a pretty, you know, uh, on a pretty solid idea. That's awesome. So, uh, so before Enforcer, you were in like a lot of extreme metal bands like Thrash and Death. So, what made you make the transition from that kind of music to the music of Enforcer? Um. I think that we played a lot of covers with my old bands. We did Motorhead covers, Venom covers, we might have done, and Exciter covers, stuff like that, you know. And, and it was like at that time, and I was only a teenager then, but, you know, I, I, always, I always felt that once we played those kind of covers, that there was like a completely change of, of energy you could play as you could play like super fast technical shit but once you got over to the d beat stuff or or like that that's when you felt the energy yeah so uh, that i think that was what eventually made me think about starting a band a little bit more in that direction um and uh i did at some point i think i don't know what sparked the idea but uh but um I I took a like a, a weekend and forced myself to to like put together a couple of riffs that I had in mind and 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 I played everything in our basement studio that we had like back then and I put this together to the first demo and put it online and it actually started to go quite viral so that was kind of how it started. Wow, that's that's crazy. And I uh, and yeah. would you call would you call like British New Wave your biggest influences in music? Maybe maybe at first like like you know when like at least founding the band but i mean i i want to take i do take in everything that i like in enforcer everything that i like with music i try to find a way of of having it represented in enforcer even if it's you know even if it's classical baroque jazz fusion stuff stuff that i'm inspired by pop music i i i i i don't hate pop music i hate modern name pop music but may i mean 90s pop still fucking cool a lot of <laughs> stuff like super like well crafted songs and stuff like that you know producers like uh, max martin or desmond child or or mutt lang all of them fucking genius mm. um so i mean i don't mind that or i i take inspiration from that, take inspiration from folk music, take inspiration from extreme metal, you know, atmospheric black metal stuff, like in, in, in everything. I don't, I don't see any, any, like any boundary that I need to, you know, because I, eventually I don't, I, I don't see Enforcer as a genre band. I see it as, as a band who wants to take this beyond like what heavy metal is today yeah to the future yeah that's really awesome to hear from you uh enforcers Thanks, is man. such a such an awesome <clears throat> band and it's really cool about like your band's history because as you said before a lot of bands get their demos out through like tape trading or mm. whatever but you guys actually got some of your stuff out on myspace so yeah so, but uh, i mean that that was like the that, that was like like, a, like it was a different era that was totally. like the first I think that was the first platform where you could like spread your music online and now there's plenty. And like the, the, the way we experienced in the very beginning, like the, how we experienced the growth is I guess similar to what people see on, on platforms that exist nowadays, such as Instagram or, or TikTok or Facebook. None of that existed when we first put out the first out, well, like the first couple of demos, it was only MySpace. Yeah, and, and you're totally right about that. There's a few bands I've discovered actually off TikTok, you know, thrash metal oh, really? bands trying yeah. to get their stuff out, which is like so crazy, you know? So the internet, How would like, you do the, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And it's like yeah. some California band. Um, so how how deep does that go? How, how much of an impact has the internet had over Enforcer? I mean, that's the reason to why we exist in the first place. But um, I kind of, I can kind of miss the MySpace days because that was a platform that was about music and not about you know 
beauty or not about kid stuff like TikTok yeah. or Instagram. You know, because you know, eventually you 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 it's really hard as a musician to compete with with beauty when Instagram is clearly made for beauty when my sister can put up a a, a picture like on her being cute can gain more 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 interactions than than what i can with a pretty with a band with a global following yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, so it's such kind of a stupid, weird yeah. landscape yeah, yeah yeah so that's why i think i mean m- i mean music has to find a different platform to to exist on in order for music to survive otherwise we will have bands that will be 100 percent image and zero percent music in the long run yeah yeah definitely because that's going to be the ones who survive yep i agree and and it's it's crazy and and i feel like metal has had almost like a a mini resurgence as of late do you think that is because of the internet and how many people can can access it now with streaming and just youtube yeah i mean that might that might be the thing i mean since since metal has been almost excluded from mainstream media for since since early 2000s perhaps i mean the, the how we connect with internet is like that we that we you know we kind of built the, the metal scene right now as 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 i see it is like a global movement a global underground movement connected through the internet and through through these platforms and that's how it's been surviving i think the past well since social media at least yeah and that's yeah definitely now now we are talking about a lot of uh, um, internet and and streaming. Now you guys are putting out an official vinyl release of Nostalgia. Um, so how important are like physical mediums for you for music and and putting your stuff out on on? Yeah, I mean the format. Because I guess that's how I, I, like so far that's what the market demands. And for me, I mean, I see no prestige in whether I put out the like a, a vinyl record or a cassette that was I saw that as prestigious when I put out my first album that it was like oh so cool to have my, my music <laughs> on vinyl but the sixth seventh eighth time it's I mean it doesn't do that the trick to me I mean I just want to get the music out there to the, whatever way that people are consuming it um, okay but, but of course it's also like a it's also like a base of an income from the music when people buy our music so that's in that case it's really important to us that people like actually spend money on music yeah okay do you do you keep that in mind at all when you when you put together a record like okay this is going to be the first track on the b side this is going to go here on the record or is it just kind of just making that track list we we used to do that like but on this album we haven't done that uh (laughs) on this album we, we had like a completely different approach like on scene it we had an idea we sketched out the entire album before we even start to work with with the actual songs but now wow. i had a different approach i think you know and uh, i the idea this time was to make 12 songs that could be like standalone single songs without any like without any thought of 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 the part that they would play in the entirety of an album that that's really cool to hear from you because i do think the record has a really nice flow to it though yeah well, <laughs> but that's you, really you, cool you, how you, yeah i agree you, yeah. like they all stand definitely on their own two feet very well yeah um, and that, that's because because no, no no song this time was made to be an opener we decided the track list after everything was done wow <clears throat> based upon which songs that came out in a different like in a different way or 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 in the respectable way that's cool respective ways yeah 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 now uh you you brought up zenith uh will we ever get a spanish version of this record Uh, on a physical medium uh or just in general i know i know zenith got a spanish version yeah 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 no no i don't think so that's why we put metal supremacy on this this album uh, <laughs> is like one song instead of a full album and and I could concentrate on making that just as good as I as it as I wanted it to be. Yeah, why why did you make a Spanish version of Zenith? Uh, I was 
pretty much an experiment on it. I mean, I, I studied Spanish. Uh, I wasn't in, in an environment where I, where I, where I spoke a lot of Spanish. Um, so it's an experiment to 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 like see perhaps what kind of markets we could explore with doing that. It's also like also paying a tribute to to the Latin American metal scene, which I find is the strongest in the world. Um, Very underrated. Build that relation, yeah. Um, so that was like, uh, yeah, that was pretty much the idea. That's awesome. Now I, I do want to go back a little bit. So I I want to talk about your uh, your journey as a musician so when did you first pick up a guitar what was your what made you want to pursue it uh i don't know i i think i i mean i'm my brother and i come from a musical brat background uh with parents like cousins uncles playing music so we've always been like very immersed in that you know our parents played in in different bands they played in and they also played in the same band and they, they integrated us very early we've been very encouraged to write music to play music we were writing songs with with our dad on bashing the piano you know and then just writing lyrics and writing songs in a very early age like i think jonas wasn't even born when we started doing that um wow. so it's always been in an in environment with that first time i actually picked up and get a guitar uh, i don't know it's it's just <laughs> always been laying around you know um but yeah. i think when i discovered heavy metal on my my own was was when i first made the connection of what i really can do with with music and from there it was endlessly inspiring to to learn everything and, and to play music and to become who I'm I am today, I guess. That's awesome. That's really cool, man. Uh now now you guys are on a nuclear blast records. I think you guys have an awesome relationship with them. So uh how yeah, did how so. did you guys get in touch? Um, they sent us an email a long time ago. <laughs> After we put out our first album, we wanted to put out our second one with them too, but we were wow. at it. We had contractual obligations with our first record label, but uh, yeah, so we 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 waited until album three before we could sign with them, and then we did. Cool. Now, now in terms of playing live, I know uh, like building a set list is very important to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, how what is what is it like putting together an enforcer set list? Like playing live, it's it's a result of 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 almost 20 years of trial and error. <laughs> Do you feel like I you've think... almost perfected the, the perfect set list or yeah, is it with so. a new record? Yeah. Do you, how, how much of the new record do you think you'll play live? It depends how it lands. I mean, on the, um, if it lands well, then, um, then we can play as much as, as we can, we could play the, the entire album, but, um, Somehow, I think that there's no, there's very unlikely that we can make an album that 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 can just like overthrow the impact that our other five albums have made, or like during our entire career. So we'll start with a few, and then if the the, the album lands well, we add another couple of songs, I guess, at a later point. Cool. So uh, yeah. what's touring? looking like right now i know maybe there's a few this things is you can announce yeah yeah and then summer? yeah summer is announced like a bunch of festival shows and then there awesome. there are stuff we can't announce yeah yeah of course that's awesome yeah. man well, is there yeah. is there anywhere you haven't played live yet that you'd really like to um australia Mm. Um, it's a country where I would love to go to play um, where we haven't been yet and I guess other places like Africa would be pretty cool too Yeah. Um, the Middle East we played in Turkey but not like further down in the Middle East China perhaps would be something that would also be, be India there's mm. plenty of places plenty of markets to 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 explore totally that's really cool man now uh as we wrap up here uh what's the best way for fans to keep in touch with the band and just follow everything you guys are doing and announcing 
well, any of the social media platforms. We have a brand new website. You can check it out. We have like all links there. Um, email, yeah, whatever. Awesome, you know, cool. You'll find us, yeah. Well, uh, Olaf, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. I'm Brandon Baddock, and this is Disturbing the Priest. It's death. I've just seen death. <laughs>